When I see a perfect wave, I get this frantic energy. I'll be gone. The majority of the kids that I teach will go, Miss, I can't believe you get in the water. Like, why would you get in the North Sea? I wouldn't dare do that. It actually is painful sometimes, but if the surf's good, it's totally worth it. Some people, including the kids that I teach, say that I'm mental for getting up and surfing in the dark before school. Or if a dog walker walks past you, you go, you must be mad. So I guess there's something about being mad. In the Northeast, you do have to engineer your life around surfing, so you have the ability to surf when the surf is there. If I have had a good surf in the morning, I teach better lessons. I respond to the kids better. I'm just more fluid. The kids maybe think I'm a bit weird or different. I will come in with wet hair and like have a surfboard on the roof of my car. If I go surfing in the morning, I'll just give myself enough time to come in here and make myself presentable enough um, to teach after getting changed by my car. One of the girls, when she found out, she said, like, hey, we've got the coolest maths teacher in the world. I thought that was quite nice. That filled the ego a little bit. There's definitely some girls who are really getting into surfing. There's also a few girls who uh, ride horses as well. I don't feel like I'm talking to them as a teacher when I'm talking to them about surfing and riding. It's nice, changes the dynamic. You can be who you are and be a teacher and teach well. I love teaching. People say the most selfish thing you can do is, is help other people, and I totally think that there is something in that. It's almost like solving a puzzle, and I loved puzzles when I was a kid. It's kind of selfish. Like, when I see them getting it, it makes me feel good. Surfing is so different to math, but it does definitely come into the classroom. Like, I want to be the best that I could possibly be. So that means I want to be good at teaching maths, and I want to be good at surfing. It takes a lot of dedication and commitment because we know that it's not that consistent. You have to be there at the right time and the right tide to make it work or you can't surf. You can't be half-hearted about it. You have to really want to do it and make it fit in. There's a hardcore group of surfers who have been doing that for years. Like my uncle, he started surfing in the 70s. I think they think we're pretty hardcore. I mean, I was in Hawaii and I was talking to a bunch of guys and telling yeah. them that we surf at seven degrees C and they just could not believe that we go in the water. People who don't surf don't appreciate how powerful the waves are. I mean even today where it looks relatively small you're gonna get smashed around a bit. You increase that wave size two or three times you are gonna get absolutely ragdolled. Emily's atypical. She's keen and she's super brave. Stupid. <laughs> I think she's got a good work-life balance. She's taken her teaching career seriously. And then the surfing is something she does outside of that, which as I say is just good for you. Kids sometimes just don't realise that teachers are people. And I find if I'm myself and then I talk to them like as I would about stuff that I'm passionate about, I find it easier to build that relationship with them and then I don't ever have to be that as authoritative with them. It's just a nicer environment. I found some old photos. Did you? There you the go. The first time I was on a horse. It's basically what I'm like now. I don't think I've grown up. Once you discover the surfing, the surfing ignited something in her that she didn't really know was there and got hold of her. And now she's obsessed. When I was 15, 16, I was almost like more concerned with fitting in a bit more than I did when I was younger. Almost lost myself a little bit. The turning point was probably when I finished uni, getting a job with horses and just getting outside again all day, every day. That was when I started surfing as well. The obsession that I had with horses came back again with surfing your happiness and the way you feel isn't dependent on anyone else. 
I want to put that on my kids. Like, I just want to encourage them to do stuff that they love, to, to be passionate about something. I think if we can encourage kids to just get outside, doing something that they love, that is going to have a massive impact on their mental health, especially right now because of COVID. There is a mold of what society wants you to do, and in that there's not a lot of space for like just something that you do because you want to do it. Who cares about the next step if you're not happy with what you're doing now? I'd much rather not even have a next step and carry on having a great time.